everyone, it's Sean. I'm here at Proust Pets again. Uh, today is Sunday story time, and with me I have a ferret. This is a domesticated ferret, and there are some really cool facts to know about these guys. First, we think ferrets came, well, domesticated ferrets, or pet ferrets, came from the European polecat. As far as we know, they've been domesticated for close to 2,500 years, so that's a really, really long time. Uh, ferrets are par part of the Muselidae family, which is the weasel family, so they're related to weasels and ermines and things like that. In fact, in North America, we had what's called the black-footed ferret, which we thought was extinct, but we now know that there are some small populations thanks to zoos breeding them and re-releasing them back out of the wild. Now, these little guys are carnivores, so that means that they eat meat. Uh, they hunt things like small rodents. Um, they'll even sometimes eat some small bugs, but mainly uh, they're going to go after the smaller rodents and stuff. We call them furry little tubes of fun, or furry slinkies, because you can see they just kind of fold all over the place. Ferrets are known for going down into burrows to hunt for their food and then also living in those burrows. Sometimes the burrows are very, very tiny, and in order for them to get back out, instead of backing up, they'll actually just kind of fold themselves <laughs> in half, like this, as he's doing right now, and come back out the same way he went in. They have very sharp teeth, but this is because they are a predator and I like to hunt. Now, one of the funner, more fun things that I like about ferrets is that a group of ferrets is called a business. So you get a group of these guys together, you have a ferret business, which is pretty fun. They are very, very active and playful, um, which is why people like to get them as pets. Um, they can wear themselves out very easily, so sometimes they'll play and play and play for a half hour, an hour straight, and then just pass out for hours on end. So this guy's been pretty wily for a little bit, so I'm kind of hoping he calms down for story time. Um, so on that note, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. Today, we are going to be reading the mitten. So this little guy hopefully will pay attention. He seems to like the pages so far. So, all right. You want to wanna hold still? I know. I know you like my beard. It's okay. Once there was a boy named Nicky who wanted his new mittens made from wool as white as snow. At first, his grandmother Baba did not want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you'll never find it. But Nikki wanted snow white mittens, and finally Baba made them. After she finished, she said, when you come home, first I will look to see if you are safe and sound, but then I will look to see if you still have your snow white mittens. So off Nikki went, and it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped in the snow and was left behind. A snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat. It was then that he saw the mitten, and he wiggled in, feet first. The mole didn't think that there was room for both of them, but when he saw the rabbit's big kickers, he moved over. Next, a hedgehog came snuffling along. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move into the mitten and warm himself. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being ones to argue when someone covered with prickles, they made their room for him. As soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl, attracted by the commotion, swooped down. When he decided to move in also, the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. But when they saw the owl's glinty talons, they quickly let him in. Up through the snow appeared a badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, and the owl were not pleased. There was no room left, but when they saw his diggers, they gave him the thumb. It started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air, and a fox trotted by, stopped to investigate. Just the sight of the cozy mitten made him feel drowsy. The fox poked his muzzle in. 
When the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth, they gave the fox lots of room. A great bear lumbered by. He spied the mitten all plumped up, not being one to be left out in the cold. He began to nose his way in. The animals were packed in as tightly as could be, but what animal would argue with a bear? The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged to many times its size, but Baba's good knitting held it fast. Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. She wriggled into the one space left and made herself comfortable on top of the great bear's nose. The bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. Ah, chew! The force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. On his way home, Nicky saw a white shape in the distance. It was the lost mitten silhouetted against the blue sky. As he ran to catch his snow white mitten, he saw Baba's face in the window. First she looked to see if he was safe and sound, and she, then she saw that he still had his new mittens. The end. Well, I hope that story time helped some of you fall asleep. It did not help our little ferret friend here calm down at all. He spent most of his time digging at my shoe. But that's okay, because they're super playful and a little bit snuggly. You do have to watch out, though, for those sharp teeth and sharp claws. But I'm kind of used to it, aren't I? You want my beard? You like my beard. So say goodnight to our ferret friend, and I hope you guys had a good night.